EVE Online has a plethora of different modules that you can fit to your ship for different effects, and even within that wide plethora of different types of modules, you then get these subdivided into a wide variety of different variations. Some of these are fairly obvious, like the Enduring variants giving a easier capacitor use so to keep them more efficient while operating, some are like the Compact that require less power grid and CPU to apply them to your ship. But what's the difference between a Republic Fleet or Kaldari Navy Shield Booster, for example? What do those actually do and what makes them different? This kind of topic is something that I've been asked to cover a lot by my community, especially those coming from EVE Echoes, a much more streamlined and simplistic version of the game. And most of these are modules that will just be covered in various different ship fitting videos, but today I wanted to talk specifically about interdiction nullifiers, because these are something that we just don't get in Echoes and are an incredibly useful piece of equipment to have fitted to the ships that can use them, and honestly, I think that's worth talking about. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie, and in this video I'm going to talk to you all about interdiction nullifiers, how they work, what ships can fit them, why you would want to fit them, and give a brief breakdown on how you can use these. We'll look at the different varieties as well to see the differences between the different types, and we'll talk about the skills that you're going to need in order to fit them. If you find this video helpful, please let me know, hit like on the video, and drop a comment down below. If you want to get more content like this in your alert feed on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, ding that notification bell. And if you really want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so by heading across to my Patreon and pledging to support there. You can donate to my PayPal tip jar, and I even have a Redbubble merchandise store where you can grab yourself some exclusive swag. You'll find that in the description down below. With all that said and done then, let's talk about interdiction nullifiers. So what are interdiction nullifiers and how do we use them? Well, at their basic level, an interdiction nullifier does exactly what it says on the tin. It nullifies interdiction spheres. Whether those are spheres from a interdiction destroyer, whether it is a standard warp disruptor probe that's been launched by an interdiction destroyer, or whether it is a mobile warp disruptor field that has been generated from a heavy interdiction cruiser, it doesn't matter. You can activate this module and then warp out of that bubble as if it did not exist. If we read the description we can see that clear in black and white, temporarily nullifies the effects of warp disrupt probes and mobile warp disruptors when activated before entering warp. You note here that it says before entering warp. You have to have this activated before you try to warp. You can't get the error that you can't warp, then click it and instantly warp. You do need to have that timing, but we'll talk more about that later. There is an immediate restriction on this as well here by the description. The module ceases to function when a burst jammer module or Higgs anchor rig are fit. If you don't know what those are, then don't worry about it, but it just means that if you have either of those on your ship, you can not activate an interdiction nullifier. They're also, notably up here, exclusive to Omega pilots. You must have an Omega clone state in order to use one of these, and it's going to take up a high slot on the ship in order to fit it. Under the requirements as well, we need to have some certain skills trained. Warp drive operation has to be at level 4, and navigation has to be at level 1. Now these aren't too hard to achieve, and certainly they're skills that you should be training anyway for most day-to-day -day ship operation, but until you've reached those benchmarks again, you won't be able to activate the interdiction nullifier. Bear all that in mind. Right, so let's talk about how they work. So let's have a look at the attributes here. We do have an activation cost, this means you have to have a certain amount of capacitor. If someone's locked you and neutralized you down to the point you have no capacitor left, then you're not going to be able to activate this. And this will differ between different modules, of course. We have a reactivation delay, which means once you've activated it and hopefully warped to safety, there is, in this case, a 100 second delay before you can reactivate the interdiction nullifier. This means, as funny as it would be, you can't warp out of one bubble directly into another, give them the middle finger and then just fly back to the first one, just keep taunting them, bouncing back and forward. You do have to think about how to use these and you need to be careful where you then warp to. I have heard horror stories of pilots escaping a gate camp with an interdiction nullifier to jump directly to another gate because it was the first thing they clicked on their overview, only to find there's another interdiction sphere there, which they now cannot jump from. Bear that in mind. 
We then have an activation time and a duration, 10 seconds. This means that once you click or press the button for your interdiction nullifier, you have 10 seconds to utilize it. If you activate warp, you will fly away. If it takes you 11 seconds to get into a position because you're bouncing off stuff, for example, you are not going to be able to activate warp in time. The interdiction nullifier duration fades and you can't warp. You then go into that reactivation delay of 100 seconds before you can activate it again. And honestly, at that point, you're probably long dead. Notably under this, though, is the ability to allow activation whilst cloaked from a Stargate jump. Normally, there are no modules that can be activated whilst you are cloaked from jumping a Stargate. You know how when you jump to a system over, you have that temporary cloak that will only drop when either you move or 60 seconds have elapsed? This you can activate it whilst under that cloak. So you can hit the interdiction nullifier button, spotting that you're in a bubble. You can hit that without dropping your cloak and then warp away safely with nothing they can do to stop you at that point other than lock you and try to scram you if they're in range and fast enough, which hopefully you've got a good align time so wouldn't really matter. There are some penalties for having one of these fit to your ship as well. A drone bandwidth penalty. You can only launch half of your drone bandwidth with one of these on. So if you, for example, were in a ship that has a 25 uh, megabits per second drone bandwidth and you fit one of these to it, then you're going to struggle to do anything with that. You can only use half the drones you normally would. Scan resolution bonus as well, this is dropped by 50%. That means you're gonna take longer to lock onto things with one of these fitted. It does not have to be active, it just means you're going to take longer to lock on. So if you are relying on your lock speed to catch something quickly, an interdiction nullifier can really mess with that. Certainly, as we'll see later, one of the types of ships that can fit interdiction nullifiers, this is a problem, and it does mean that those pilots will often actually unfit these when required, or at least offline them, so as not to have to worry about those penalties. Finally, the maximum target, rate, uh, target range bonus again is halved. If your ship can normally lock targets at 50 kilometers, if you have an interdiction nullifier fitted, you can now only lock within 25 kilometers. That is a serious consideration when fitting one of these modules, especially if you're in a ship that uses this kind of range for combat. Although it does come into effect as well on things like explorers, you're gonna have to be closer to the cans to lock onto them. It's not a huge issue but it is worth noting. Also, you get the point here, cannot auto-repeat. If you activate an interdiction nullifier, you don't have to remember to switch it off. It will do its one 10 second cycle, it will then deactivate automatically and go on to that 100 second cooldown before you can activate it again. Now the final major restriction on these is how you can fit these two ships. It's a high slot module, so you're gonna need a free high slot to fit it, you're going to need to be an Omega level pilot, you're going to need to have the required skills, but they can only be fit to these specific ships. Interceptors, that's things like the Stiletto, the Crow. If you go into the ship tree and have a look at the Tech 2 Interceptor frigates, that's what it's talking about here. There are eight of these, two for each of the main empires. Those are the Interceptors. Blockade runners, these are the various hauling ships that you'll see, things like the Prowler. If you go into your ship tree again, go along to your hauling ships, the Tech 2 variants include the blockade runners, which are the ones that can have the covert ops cloaks fitted to them, and deep space transports. Again, this is like the Mimitar, not the Mammoth, the other one, whose name completely eludes me at this point in time. Uh, the Megalodon? No, it's not that. I can't remember. Someone's going to remind me in the comment section down below. But if you're flying a blockade runner or a deep space transport, these can also fit into diction nullifiers and ultimately there the penalty to drone bandwidth scan resolution or maximum targeting range just doesn't matter because you're not using those anyway strategic cruisers can fit these that's the loki the tengu the legion and the proteus some of my favorite ships in the game they can fit into diction nullifiers if you want to try and use these to get through game camps ultimately again you are going to have to face those negatives when fitting it but absolutely vital the Victoria Luxury Yacht. This is such a niche thing, I'm not gonna spend time on it. There is one very particular, very rare, very expensive ship that does nothing other than say, hey, look at me, I got swag, and that can fit into diction nullifiers. 
Covert Ops can also fit into Diction Nullifiers, that is your Tech 2 Explorers and your Stealth Bombers can both fit these as well, and Haulers can fit these. Standard Haulers like the Wreath and the Mammoth, that kind of thing, can fit into Diction Nullifiers. If your ship type is not listed on here, you cannot fit an interdiction nullifier. This is one of the main issues with flying an Astero or a Pacifier for going through exploration content. Whereas the Tech 2 Explorers can fit interdiction nullifiers because they come under the Covert Ops heading, the Astero and the Pacifier cannot. Well worth noting. Ultimately though, that's just the basic version of the interdiction nullifier. What about its different variants? How do they differ? I've put all four interdiction nullifiers into the compare tool so that we can talk about the difference between them. This is the interdiction nullifier 1, interdiction nullifier 2, compact interdiction nullifier, and enduring interdiction nullifier. And if you are paying attention to the intro to this video, you probably already have a vague understanding about what compact and enduring means, but let's go through this all anyway. Starting with the basic interdiction nullifier 1, this wonderful piece of equipment here. It's a Tech 1 piece of fitting, it has a 50 gigajoule activation time, a 100 second reactivation delay, and a 10 second activation duration. It also only uses 38 teraflops of CPU to fit it to your ship. That's not too bad, it's nice and easy to fit one of these to a ship. The 10 seconds activation time is usually enough, especially if you're flying something like an Interceptor or a Covert Ops Frigate, for example. Might be a little bit on the tight side if you're using one of the haulers, but for me, I fly a Prowler, the Interdiction Nullifier 1 is by far the best option for that. Why is it the best option? Because that 10 second duration may sound a little bit low compared to some of the others, as we'll see in a moment, but that reactivation delay is also the shortest. This means if if you do end up warping out of an interdictor gate camp and trying to find somewhere safe to go, you've only got 100 seconds that you need to pass before you can risk jumping into another gate camp. Remember, the gate cloak that you get only lasts for 60 seconds. So if, for example, you do then jump through another gate and you find yourself in another bubble, it's hopefully you've spent 40 seconds since activating the interdiction nullifier for that to cool down before then arriving on a gate. And so you've got fewer than 60 seconds on the activation, on the uh, reactivation delay remaining, so you can activate the interdiction nullifier again. That ability to reactivate it quite quickly in inverted commas, quickly, 100 seconds is still a long time in combat, ultimately is what I really enjoy about the basic interdiction nullifier one, and you'll see that on almost every ship that I use interdiction nullifiers, this is the one that you fit. If we then compare this to the Compact and the Enduring, you'll see that these both have a 12 second activation time duration, so they last for 12 seconds before then timing out, but they do come with a reactivation delay of 130 seconds. That's over two minutes. You've gone from six minutes, uh, sorry, one minute and 40 seconds up to two minutes and 10 seconds. It's a big jump. It's a lot of additional time to wait that is just uncomfortable whilst you're being hunted or sitting waiting for a game cloak to drop off kind of thing. Now, the main difference between those two otherwise is the fact that the Enduring has a lower activation cost. Rather than 50 gigajoules, it's only 35. I find this incredibly niche because by chance that you're in an interdiction sphere, it's probably as you've arrived on grid. You should be at fairly high capacitor when you go to activate an interdiction nullifier in most situations anyway, so the Enduring just doesn't really seem to have much use for me. The difference between the Compact, though, is that the 38 teraflop CPU requirement is only 32 teraflops this time around. If you're struggling to fit a standard interdiction nullifier to a ship, maybe you don't have particularly high fitting skills, then the Compact can make that a little bit easier for you. Again, it's nice to get those 12 seconds of duration rather than just 10, although I don't ever seem to find that those two seconds matter for me personally, they may do for you, but that reactivation delay, again the 30 seconds additional reactivation delay, does really hurt. But what about the Tier 2 version, the Interdiction Nullifier 2? Well, this has the same activation cost, 50 gigajoules, it has a significantly higher CPU usage of 46 teraflops, which means it can be that little bit tougher to fit to a ship, and it also has a massive reactivation delay of 150 seconds. That is 2 minutes and 30 seconds before you get to reactivate this one. That can be deeply 
uncomfortable and is mainly the reason I don't really use this. But that does give you an activation duration of 15 seconds. So if you're using a deep space transport or a standard hauler and you need the full 15 seconds to absolutely ensure that you get into warp whilst it's still active, I guess that's useful, but that massive reactivation delay can really, really hurt. And honestly, I just find that I end up using the Interdiction Nullifier 1 for pretty much everything I do. It's not to say that the others don't have usage. As I said, certainly the Compact is very useful if you don't have the fitting skills required, you're running low on CPU, it can help you cram one in. I just don't like the 30 second delay on that. The Interdiction Nullifier 2, definitely niche if you need all 15 seconds of activation time, but at a cost of 150 seconds reactivation delay, that's really an uncomfortable situation to find yourself in. You manage to warp out of the Interdictor Sphere you're in, but you've warped to a planet or the sun or something like that to try and get to a safe point, and you're now waiting to warp back to a different gate with the Interdiction Nullifier ready just in case that one's gate camped you're suddenly sitting there for 150 seconds whilst they try to combat scan you or warp around the different planets. That's a long time whilst you're being hunted. And there's a big part of me that just thinks that's a big issue. You might find a use for this though, especially if you're coming out of a gate camp and you know it's only on the one gate and you're moving to another one that you know is going to be safe, for example. That's a use where the Interdiction Nullifier 2 absolutely shines. But I personally find that for 90% of the ships I'm flying, whether those are covert ops, uh, covert ops frigates, whether that's running interceptors, whether that's my tier 3 cruisers, even my prowler, I'm using the basic interdiction nullifier 1 on all of that because it does everything I need with the shortest cooldown possible. But those are just my thoughts and opinions, folks. If you are using interdiction nullifiers on your ships, I would love to hear what ships you're fitting them to, which interdiction nullifier you're using, and why you prefer that particular type. I'd love to know what things am I missing when it comes to, for example, the enduring interdiction nullifier. To me, the absolutely most curious of these completely. I think that between, if you need to, you know, go up to the 12 second duration, for example, between the compact and the enduring, I'd wholeheartedly prefer to just go for the compact for the easier fitting. I don't see a situation where the enduring would come into use, but hey, let me know. Otherwise, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way to the end. Hopefully now you understand interdiction nullifiers just that little bit better, and maybe this will save you from an interdiction sphere at some point in the near future. Otherwise, thank you for watching, happy sailing, and see you in New Eden!